Welcome to Curly Q&A, Mondays with Melanie. I am your host, Ken Nichols, and I'm here with Melanie Nichols. She is the founder of the Raw Hair Organic Salon in beautiful Naples, Florida. It's one of the top curly hair salons in the country, and Melanie is one of the top curl experts. And every Monday night, we do a Q&A where you ask questions and we answer them. And boy, is this going to be a loaded show tonight. <laughs> oh, boy, we're going to go over some stuff. And I'm going to, we're going to try really hard to keep it into 30 minutes. But uh, we, got a, we got a lot to uh, go over and we're going to do a little bit different than we normally do. It's supposed to be an Ask Me Anything show, too. We'll see if we can get to some of those. So how are you today, Melanie? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. My normal Mondays Good. look crazy. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. I don't know. Ken's all fired up over something. Mine has been just just <laughs> the last couple days that's my life oh my god it's been it's been really crazy so oh my gosh so uh all right well let's go over a couple let's go over a couple of things quick uh next okay so not this saturday but next saturday is the day of curls weekend right the 22nd mm -hmm. i think it is yeah i was wondering if that, you had the countdown that's coming up yeah we're two weeks away from that mm -hmm. that's the day of curls giveaway if you guys remember we did a uh, a giveaway uh, here on the show and in the curly girl support group where we had people enter for a all expense paid trip to the raw hair organic salon in naples florida to have a day of curls to get a full what do we call it a full curly makeover is that what we called it mm -hmm. or curly hair yeah curly hair treatment and we've called it a lot yeah. of different things Cur but. curly hair treatment curly hair makeover and the winner was uh, misty richmond from ohio correct and we are flying her in on saturday the 22nd and early right very early, early. She's very early getting prepared to sleep now yes yeah, right exactly it's gonna be a long day for her but it's gonna be a lot of fun oh and she'll be excited so she'll you know i'm sure be full yeah. of um energy and just excitement and I'm adrenaline sure yeah i will be mm. and we are going to be filming that as well which is going to be really cool so we'll um uh, we'll have uh, our producer, Rhett, we'll put it into a couple minute long, maybe three, four minute long video at the end, and then we'll show it, uh, you know, maybe uh, the beginning of the following week. And we'll talk about it that Monday on uh, on the Curly Q&A mm, and cool. uh, tell you how that went, and maybe show you some snapshots and whatever, and it'll be a lot of a lot of fun. Everybody's looking forward to it. Seriously, everybody's looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So Yep, we're ready. Yeah, so that's about it. So do you have a fun fact for us today or no? Um, yes. Well, you had a fun fact for us. Remember from last week, you had made us wait. What was the fun fact? Oh my gosh. You don't remember? No. You can't do that. You can't say it's going to be next week and then forget. I can't remember what it was because I know we said we're going to do Ask Me Anything today, mm -hmm. but we're only going to do, we're only going to do a couple and it's just, it's just because we're loaded and stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll, we'll try to do it. So what, what, what was it the... had to do with dating? That was that was an ask me anything question. That no, that it wasn't, wasn't a fun fact. No, it wasn't. Okay, yeah. Somebody had asked in the somebody had asked a question last week for the Ask Me Anything show and wanted uh, uh, Melanie and I to both share what our worst first date experience was. And I said, Well, I know which one it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't this one. But uh, I told Melanie, I said, Think about it. And we'll talk about uh, you know <laughs> give you a week to think about it. Mine, I knew I know mine's mine's really easy, and uh, I said Melanie, you can have a week to think about. It. So do you, do you want to tell yours? Or do you want me to tell mine? It's a little bit longer, so we could probably save it. Uh, go figure. Oh my gosh! It's what a, a surprise! Can the answer is longer? It's a it was a it was off. Well, you and can it was, sum it up. You can sum it up. I'll go so you can think of how you can shorten your answer. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, okay, so this is our one of our worst dates, is that? Worst first date. Oh, okay, all right. Um, yes, I don't even know the person's name. So it was That's another great. blind date that I was set up on with somebody that I worked with. And so we went out as, you know, couples together. So um, it was a friend of theirs that they were having me meet, the, the girl that I worked with and her husband brought their friend. And it was such a disaster, oh my gosh, from the get-go. I mean, just... Overall, the the guy had to get drunk. He was drinking so much he had to get drunk because he said he was so nervous. Because I guess I'm kind of intimidating. You think? According to Rhett, he's afraid of me. Right. <laughs> Ken's probably afraid of me too. 
<laughs> but um, so anyway, this guy's getting totally wasted, and I'm not a drinker, so that's a huge turnoff. I'm like, what a loser. <laughs> right. Then he forgot his wallet, you know. So oh, that the classic. Yeah, the classic. I forgot my wallet. Yeah, so their, the friends had to pay for, I don't even know where we went. It wasn't anywhere nice. Oh, my and God. And then what else? Oh, then he ended up stalking me because he, he was a cop. And, um, oh, jeez. Yeah. There you go. So the next, you know, after, of course, that didn't work out for me at all. Um, I just. Yeah, I had no interest in that kind of person. Um, and, and so I wasn't, like, answering his calls or returning his calls. And, um, and he said... he called. Yeah. Well, he said, um, I know you're home because I'm sitting outside your house. So he was, like, sitting outside stalking me, knowing that I was home and not answering his calls or whatever. I was like, oh, God, yeah, crazy. So that was bad. That was bad. Did he finally just go away? Yeah. I don't remember. I guess after that he just went away. <laughs> gosh that's a good one yeah that was a good one <laughs> mine's pretty good too but or we'll, bad one we'll talk about yeah mine's pretty bad we'll talk about it later i had to really think i had to really think about it because i know there's i know um oh for those of you who, who are either listening to this on a podcast uh or watching it on instagram you're not part of the curly girl support group on facebook that's our uh, curly hair support facebook group it's 49 or fifty thousand members strong and um I know there's a couple of people in there that know this girl, so uh, I wanted to be careful. But it, I, it, it was all my fault. It was all my fault. It was bad. Is that the of girl me. who punched you? No, oh. it was different. <laughs> that was oh, different. That, would be fun. that was bad too. <laughs> okay. Oh, so. yeah, I could have thrown that in there. No, that makes me look really bad, so I can't. The other one doesn't make me look near as bad. It's just a it was a series of, of unfortunate events. Mm. But we'll we'll see. We'll see if we get to it. Okay. Are we at thirty minutes yet, Rhett? Let's go. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. Okay, let's let's get started. Uh all right. So uh, one of the things that we don't talk about enough and again, uh, for those of you who are not in that Facebook group, if you really are looking for you know curly sport, uh, I would highly encourage you to come in there and join uh, join it. It's uh, it's a really pretty solid group, and we moderate it as best as we can. Um, but but one of the things that comes up a lot um, that we don't we don't address enough is uh, is products, and there, there's a reason that that we don't. But at the same time, sometimes it 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 gets kind of to I want to call it a boiling point where uh, it turns into a lot of misinformation being spread, and that's exactly why we started the group in the first place was because we saw so much m misinformation from non-professionals going on in all these other gigantic exactly. curly hair Facebook groups mm -hmm. of 100 and 200,000 people, um, you know, and people trying to start the curly girl method and getting a whole bunch of crap info. So. Um, well, that's so, what we've always said. Be careful of who you listen to. You know, there's you so much information out there, but you have to see where the information is coming from. Are right. these, you know, technicians, people that actually practice, you know, the skills behind the chair working in the salon that are professionals yeah. that are trained, you know, that are have an actual, you know, educational background. Right. So. Right. So. <laughs> so we're going to I'm going to tell you this. Uh, we're we're, we're going to talk about. <laughs> you're gonna and you still get a variance of opinion. You do. So I just want to throw that out you there. You do. And Which is good. You know, for, for those of you who, uh, I don't know, did I mention it in the intro that you're you're the, the no, founder of you the... No, I don't even think you did the uh, intro. I, I you were this all guy like so flustered. Much on my, I had a heck of a day. Uh, Melanie is the founder of the Raw Curls brand of curly and natural uh, and organic uh, hair products. And uh, uh, we're, we, we, we don't do the, for those of you who have not been here before, we do not do the show to promote uh, that product line, but we are going to kind of talk about it without bringing up that name today just to get into this. So I, I didn't now, just so you guys know, I didn't prep Melanie on this, on how I was going to set this up other than tell her that I was going to tell one story that I know really helps to explain it. So, uh, so let, let's kind of, let's kind of start from the beginning. Rhett, can you, um, can you pull, pull up a picture on the screen? For those of you who are listening on podcasts, you can't see this, but I'm going to describe this to you. Ooh, this. is that your car? Is that your first car that you've talked about? <laughs> yes. Yes. This is a, uh, wow. this is a 1970 Volkswagen bug up on the on the screen that is very similar to my first car that was $75 mm. very very similar other than the stripe uh, and one of the fenders was green 
So, but that's literally exactly it what it looked like. It looks bigger, like, like a, um, Chrysler. Um, 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 what are those? No, Crossfire. No. 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 It's not. <laughs> it's nothing. It looks like longer. That. Well, it isn't. Hmm. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's a 1970 Volkswagen Bug, and uh, I think we can all agree that that is a car, right? And mine was $75 that I got in high school and drove it after high school and into college. And right now you could buy online. I looked, you could actually buy a car very similar to that condition right now uh, for about $400. Wow. And uh, we all agree it's a car. Now, um, the second picture that we're going to bring up here, we can also agree is a car. This is a 2017 Lamborghini Aventador. This car right now you can buy online for $550,000. Hmm. It's a bargain. It's a bargain. And I will preface that uh, contrary to popular belief, I do not own a orange Lamborghini. <laughs> Is it orange or yellow? It looks that, yellow. That's, uh, I think that one's yellow, yeah. I do not own a yellow Lamborghini. I don't think okay. you would fit in there. <laughs> uh, it's tight. Um, but we again, we can, we can agree that that is also a car. Now, that car right there will get you from point A to point B, and you'll look pretty good in it. And the first car I can tell you, because I drove that Volkswagen for several years, I can tell you that it will get you from point A to point B sometimes I for a while. I was gonna say, I'm not sure that that and one would you get you anywhere. Right, uh, for a while it did, and but you're not gonna look real good in it. <laughs> that, much, that much I can tell you. So that brings us to, you're probably thinking, Ken, how does this relate to curly hair products? And I'm gonna tell you. This right here is a 39 ounce bottle of Trey Semme Curly Hair Conditioner. I bought this today. Ooh. I got that in my You're ears. You're not supposed to I slam bought, it down on the that. table. I bought this. And it's Tresemme anyway. Tresemme. I always say it wrong. Mm -hmm. I bought this today. If you're on the podcast, I know you can't see it, so I'm describing it. I bought this today uh, for $4.99. Okay? And this will condition your curly hair. This is a bottle of 12-ounce fructose curl nourish conditioner. I bought this today for two dollars and 89 cents oh my god mm -hmm. where at target this this is even better this is a 28 ounce bottle of suave frizz control curl conditioner that i bought for two dollars and 99 cents wow this right here now you're going to look it's kind of funny and it's because I, I had to make it because i didn't i didn't have one but i had the labels right i had the small ones. this so you got to imagine this in my hands is a 12 ounce bottle of diva one curl conditioner and it's 19 dollars and 25 cents this is a 16 ounce bottle of raw curls organic conditioner and this bottle is 32 bucks, okay? This and this, the Trey Semme and the Diva Curl and the Raw Curls Conditioner are not the same. The Fructose, Fructose, Fructis. <laughs> the Fructis and the Diva Curl and the Raw Curls are not the same. The Suave and the Diva Curl and the Raw Curls Conditioner are not the same. Thus, you are not going to get the same results in a $2.89 bottle of condi curl conditioner as you will from a $20 one, as you will from a $32 one. I actually wanted to bring a um, uh, a weed ad one in here, but I couldn't find. I know I had one, but I couldn't find it. Mm. And that one's like thirty six or thirty eight bucks for twelve mm. twelve mm -hmm. ounces, I think, something like that, or fourteen ounces. They're not the same, and you're not going to get the same results. Just like the car example that I showed you, it's the same thing with conditioner. So, why am I bringing this up? Well, the reason is is because there's lots of people that come into. Um, either our you know quest put questions on our YouTube channel in our Facebook group on our Instagram uh, or any of our Facebook groups curl groups and they're new to the curly girl method 
and they don't know what to buy and they've got people recommending $4.99 bottles of stuff, $2.89 bottles of stuff, and they're using them and they're not getting great results and they can't figure out why and they get frustrated and they quit. The reason is ingredients matter. Ingredients matter. And the ingredients in a $2.89 retail bottle of conditioner is not going to be the same as one that's 20 bucks or one that's 30 bucks to 40 bucks. It just isn't. Now, I'm going to give you a, a, a much better real world example because you're probably thinking, thinking, oh, they're just saying that because they want to sell product. Well, that's not the case. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, don't, I, I, I don't care if you buy anything that I sell or not. I don't I don't care. I'm going to make but I'm going to make this point. Before I got into this industry, I spent 16 years owning a company that had a division that sold commercially uh, and industrial chemicals and ingredients. A lot of the stuff that you see in products like this and this and this. A lot of the same stuff. I did that for 16 or 17 years. Sold millions of dollars of it every single year. And I'm going to tell you a brief story so you get an idea because a lot of people have this conversation about what builds up and what doesn't and, and why. I had a very large client that was a, uh, a school district and they bought drinking water treatment uh, chemicals from me as well as swimming pool chemicals from me. Lots of them, pallets, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth. And I had this client for years. Well, one year the bid came up and I lost it. And one of the ingredients that is used in every single one of these products right here was also used to balance the water in their Olympic size swimming pools. And I lost the bid and I was shocked because at the time I was the biggest supplier in the Midwest of, of this stuff. And they were very nasty to me because I was outbid by at least 25%. And they were really upset because they believed that I had been ripping them off for a decade, right? And that was pretty much it. About two or three months goes by and I get a call from them. And they called me up and they said, hey, we'd really like you to come out and take a look at our swimming pool water. And I said, why? And I said, well, we're having an issue, but we, you know, we don't want to tell you about it. We want you to see it. And I said, well, you're not buying my stuff, right? I'm mm. like, you're, you're calling the wrong, you're calling the wrong guy, right? And they're like, no, you're the guy we want to come out and take a look at this. Did so you I, up your price? Well, I'll tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> so um, I, I went out there and I walked out and immediately as I looked at the, at, as I walked up the indoor pool, big indoor pool, as I walked up to it and I looked at it, I could tell it looked dull. It, it looked it looked gray. It did not have that bright, shiny sheen that it always did when I was supplying. And they said, this is what we're dealing with, and we don't know why. So I went into the back where all the equipment was, and I started to look at the at the filter tanks, right? And they're, they're big and open, if I can describe them. They're big open tanks with filters in them, and the water flows through them, right? Well, I start looking in the tank, and I'm looking on the grids, and I'm looking on the bottom, and I can see all these little dark colored specks. Right, so I dig my hand in and I start looking at them, and there's they're just like little specks, dark, but enough that you can see them. So I go over and I look at the bags of that of chemicals that they have, and I open this one up that I lost this bit on, and I open it up and I look at it, and sure enough, it's the same. It's labeled the same thing that that you know that I was selling them for fourteen bucks a bag that they got for eight or eight fifty a bag but you can see all these little specks in it. So I flip the thing over and I start looking at the ingredients. I'm like, okay, what the hell's going on, right? And I start looking at it and I realize that I was selling them food grade ingredients, right, chemicals, and they were bid industrial grades. So that was the difference. And actually, yeah, because they asked me, they said, would you honor your bid price? And I said, no. I said, because I have to pre-buy the stuff in the winter. I have to buy a rail car full of it. I'm like, no. So it ended up costing them more than mm. double Expensive to switch. Lesson. Expensive lesson. It was at taxpayer expense. You know, mm. I never lost them after that. So that being said, the ingredients used to make this 499, 39 ounce bottle, 
I can guarantee you are not the same quality that it takes to make a 32 or a $32 bottle of 16 ounce stuff or 12 ounce. It's not, it, it's a lesser, it's a much lesser quality because there are different grades. There's, there's commercial fillers, grades, there's intensive there's, grades. Yeah, there's cheaper, there's, there's cheaper ingredients, there's fillers, there's, there's all kinds of, there's fillers, you know, I mean, absolutely. it's just common sense if it's gonna cost that cheap that, you know, it's gonna have a different, well, I think it it's common sense. It seemed right, I think that's the key. Sense. You think but, it's common sense because you know and I do too, yeah, but, but it's not. Right, right. So, hmm. yeah, so that's, that's, so that's kind of it. So let me, let me make so one more point about this. So use whatever products you want, but you're going to, you know, that may be why you get um, mm, dissatisfying results. That's, that's it. Okay. Is this going to condition your hair? Yeah, to a point. But remember, you know, everybody wants to talk about how, well, th let's just say, for example, well, if I read this ingredient label and, in, you know, in this Trey Seme for $4.99 and, it, you know, it's curly girl friendly because I don't see any of the sulfates. Okay, right. Okay. Right. Well, here's the thing. Remember what I just explained to you about same exact chemical, mm -hmm. right? But a different grade. So remember, a you, different you could, grade, a different source. It, a different source. You can see it in the water. Like I said, I could see it in the filter tanks. That's what's ending up on your hair. So that's why you see people that use stuff like this. Again, I'm not pushing. I'm just. It just happened to be what I had, right? Um, high quality stuff. You see people that post pictures of themselves who use high quality stuff and all high quality stuff, you see their hair looks great. And if you really take a good hard look at the pictures that you see online, when people list off that they're using this and this and this, again, I'm not picking on anybody, I'm just trying to make the point so people understand you know, the truth. You're gonna see when you really take a real hard critical look, you can clearly tell they look different. The results are are different. So, in other words, um, yeah, and that is I, I something that, that we get a lot of comments about, and that's why it's so easy in the salon to sell our product. We don't sell it; it sells itself it sells because itself. people can see actually immediate results. They see that shine in their hair. You know, everybody. That's like an anti aging thing for you know hair. There's mm -hmm. antioxidants in there. The yeah. the quality of oils and everything that we everything. use um, gives that sheen and that shine to your hair like you're younger mm -hmm. and you definitely are going to have more of a dull effect with other ingredients that are not of the same quality and guaranteed probably if you run your fingernails or something against the strand of the hair meaning like holding the hair strand down and running your fingers upward yeah. you're probably going to pull some of that white wax off of it because we see that all the time in the sun and we shared pictures of that yeah. Somewhere. Uh, yeah, and even even not wax, just um, I mean, for for lack of a better word, I, I'll call them fillers. Yeah. You know, we really in the in, in the in the chemical industry, we you know we call them inert inert ingredients, right? Mm. But they're really like fillers. Um, inerts. Inerts, right? Mm. <laughs> right. It's with a T, not a D. Oh. Um, but that <laughs> <laughs> right. But like that's that. you know that that's so you talk about yeah, so and so doesn't build up, you know, but it cl it clearly leaves. It, it clearly leaves something back when you use mm. lesser quality ingredients. Here, I'll give you another thing that I'll, I'll just point out, just to give you an idea. And, and, this is, and, and we'll stop right here, okay? Just to give you an idea. So I manufacture this stuff, right, okay? What's this stuff? This is rock, oh yeah, I gotta remember, I'm a podcast, right, gotta remember. Um, I, I manufacture the, this Raw Curls original conditioner, okay? Just to give you an idea, right? This cap, bottle and label just the cap bottle and label period costs me costs me more than that about bottle. a it cost me about a buck right right cost me about a buck <laughs> this is 289 retail in a store <laughs> okay <laughs> get you, so, you guys get the picture that, get the picture like, um, right i remember that was an ask me anything and actually well i mean they didn't have this exact suave <laughs> when I was younger, but I did use well. When well, I was okay, younger. yeah. That, but my hair wasn't even, it wasn't as curly, I'll tell you that. I don't yeah. know. I and, can think back and yeah, it and definitely again, wasn't as curly. Yeah, and like I said, you know, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, we're not ripping on anybody. We're just trying to make this point because um, it's, it turns out to be a bone of contention, conten, contention. Rhett, can you pull up my Volkswagen again? Can you pull that up? All right, okay. Well, right. well. When I, when I was driving this, Guarantee I was buying this. 
Because mm. <laughs> I, hey, I get it. Trust me, I know. We've poor. all been there. I, I, we've, we've all, all been, been there. there. Some worse than others. Some longer than others. Yeah, and you, you know, know? I, I always say it is what it is. There's, you know, there's people that have to go to whatever cost cut or super cuts. You know, there is a, a supply and demand for that. Um, so, you know, if that's all that you can afford and that's where you are in your life, then that's so be it. I mean, right. there's been, you know, we talked about, we have shared that before we've yeah. gone, we've been really, really broke. You know, we both yeah. grew up without money and we've yep. been, and then we had lots of money and then we yeah. lost everything. Yeah. So, I mean, to the point of having to shop uh, at the <laughs> farmer's markets and when I was sick, oh yeah. yeah, um, you know, we stayed home and played cards cause we couldn't afford to go out to a movie. You're spending everything on medical bills. Yeah. Like I sold everything. Nothing. I even tried to sell my wedding ring. Remember? Yep. You sure do. Yep. So we just, we sold everything we owned off yep. pictures. I mean, for <laughs> whatever we could sell, um, yeah. you know, things that people would buy yeah. cars, anything, everything. We had, I so we had know, hundreds. trust me. Yeah, we, so we, we know what it's like to be broke and once. we get it. So. Yeah, yeah. So. And I can, I can share another similar story going into the hair industry. Uh, I, I can think of a client that I had, you know, people, and again, they're, you know, sometimes, I don't know, for whatever reason, people want to color their hair at home, whether it's because they just don't want to spend time in the salon or they don't want to spend the money, so be it. But you know, there's always consequences. And so I had a lady who was trying to save money and color her ser- her hair herself at home. Mm-hmm. And she messed it up because it's not always as easy as what it seems. And then I mean, for a correction, which is what I call a kitchen correction, because people are doing their hair at home in the kitchen. And, you know, I tell people I can fix just about anything, but it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to cost a lot of money. So, and there is no exact. So when people come in for a color correction and they want to know how much, I say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's an, I charge $125 an hour. I can tell you on average, it's three to five hours. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it could be more, it could be less. But, and this woman did it three times. Like she spent so much money having me fix her hair color and then she colored it herself again and had to come back and spent so much i remember much. this remember story that? that's when i was yes. working at malcolm i remember that yeah i remember that and now. so finally after the third time she decided that she you know could have probably paid right. for her hair color for five years right and, but anyway so right. yeah so same yeah kind of so, thing. so we just wanted to wanted to point that out just and we do every once in a while just because um you know, because it comes up and, you know, again, you know, we know how it is. Like I said, we know how it is. You're at certain points in your life. I mean, that's what you can for, afford. But, you know, but remember, don't, you know, don't, don't expect, you know, the, don't expect to get the same results in, uh, in my Volkswagen as you would in my Lamborghini. <laughs> Don't right? expect Ferrari hair when you're right. using when you got a VW budget. V- Volkswagen products. Right. But. But again, not ripping on anybody, mm-hmm. but just just want just want you guys. And maybe they'll just get lucky, you but know. You, know. you know, maybe. So um, if there's a struggle or a problem, then you know, yeah, there's a possible solution. Yo, I'll solve it, like vanilla ice, right? Mm, <laughs> sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, all right. Let's let's get into some actual questions. Um, Melanie, what is your best advice for a routine for overprocessed, high porosity? 3A hair. Right now, my wash day consists of Shea Moisture Coconut Shampoo, Shea Moisture Apple Cider Vinegar Conditioner, never even heard of that, a Shea Moisture Deep Conditioning Treatment, Diva Curl Leave-In Protein Treatment, Carol's Daughter's Almond Milk Leave-In, and finally, Miss Jessie's Pillow Soft Curls. Wow. Yeah, they're all kind of all over the place there. Yeah. Do you remember the question? <laughs> What is your best advice for a routine for overprocessed, high porosity 3A hair? Yeah. So One, two, three, four, five, that is, six, seven, um, seven, yeah, I would, I think they're probably throwing too many things at it, to be honest with you. I would use a, a you know, a, a nice moisturizing um, sh- cleanser, whether, you know, you do a no poo or, a, a, you know, a low poo. Or, low poo, yeah. Um, yeah, because you definitely are needing moisture in that hair. And then, you know, of course, a, a nice, heavy moisturizing conditioner. And then I would suggest, all you know, styling products, um, using things that are not going to dry the hair, that continue to put oils and moisture into the hair, and then also add a 
a moisturizing deep conditioner, uh, I would go with that because they're they're using things that are mixing the proteins and moistures mm-hmm. in there. Um, yeah. And so for that type of hair and for the high porosity that she's got going on, I would start with doing more of those um, moisture products and see if that works better. But it sounds like she's just kind of throwing so many things into the mix. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That that uh, that question was from Samantha Aurora. So thank you, Samantha. Mm. So good luck to you. Uh, Lily, oh, here. Well, this is kind of already answered. Uh, Lily Novi, uh, her question, she said, I have no question, but I'm very excited to learn about which ingredients slash products cause buildup. Well, I think we kind of addressed that at least in, in basic. And we could go way, we could go way deeper in that. I don't know. Maybe we will in another episode. We'll see. So uh, let's see. Uh, Leah... Eves, let's see, she asks, I do not want to diffuse, so how can I get my curls to dry faster? Is there something missing from my routine? Hmm. Well, in that case, uh, again, you know, we always talk about products, and we're going back to that, that are important because um, products that are going to penetrate into the hair instead of just sitting on top of them are going to help it to dry quicker. So that's going to go back to the quality of ingredients and that they're not just coating the hair and sitting on top of it. Um, Also using like doing the plopping method, um, you know, where in the salon we actually put the products in really wet hair and then we squeeze out that excess water with either a microfiber towel, flower sack towel, t-shirt, or paper towel. And that sets and locks the curl, but it also takes out that excess water. And then I, it really helps the hair to dry quicker. It does. Uh-huh. It sets it up nicely, and then, you know, it seems to dry fairly quick. So what, what dries faster? Does a, a diffuser dry faster than a, than a hooded dryer? That you no. would have at home? No. No, it does not. A okay. hooded dryer definitely is going to be the quickest. That those dry the hair in like minutes yeah yeah it's awesome yeah um they do sell them at sally's for a decent price because i have clients that have bought them i mean you can get i could sell i I have some for sale in my garage um i have some on the um rolling wheels like a tripod almost uh, yeah if you live close i'd sell you a couple cheap yeah I, i don't even know if those were ever used Mm, they were used well and that one is really expensive but um they were used maybe for a a couple weeks and then i decided it just wasn't the right setup it wasn't what i thought um for the salon yeah for the space yeah for the our new salon yeah so anyway but the hooded dryers oh they yeah definitely hands down dry the quickest Mm, okay Mm -hmm. uh danny and uh danny ann fisher would like to know she said, and I'll put this in air quotes, right? Do we share the same thoughts as Diva Curl? This is Diva Curl's ex, one of the uh, ex founders. Uh, do we share the same thoughts as Lorraine Massey with oils staining the hair and blocking out the moisture, much like silicone? I've talked about this before. Um, I don't fully agree. If they're if they're referencing what that video, I'm assuming that's what she's what she's talking about. I, I don't know how much Lorraine's been talking about this yeah. lately. I'm not sure. I only saw one little video. Yeah, I saw I saw one. I saw a little one on on Instagram. It's got to be almost a year ago. No, but, I don't think so. But no, I mean, I saw a little one after that. Oh, okay. But mm, anyway. So I my answer is I I agree and disagree I don't I don't fully agree with what she was saying and and I think and she even opened that door to you know um, have a conversation with people that had a difference of opinion and I certainly would you know like we do many times with us you know professionals sit around a table and you know discuss ideas and what's working and what's not working mm-hmm. we've done that at hair shows before. yeah we've done that at hair shows yeah and you know it's not like you're right and i'm wrong it's just like hey you know what do you think about this and yeah so it's actually really interesting we had uh it's got to be last year i think we were a big show in chicago and we sat around with um sherry harbinger from from diva had breakfast with her and um Cristo. Right? Cristo. Yeah, from Curlisto. Yeah. And There's somebody else. A couple other people. Yeah, a couple right? other people. Um, really interesting. <laughs> really interesting to hear, you know, because people are doing uh, well, are are doing different things. And um, Michelle Breyer was there, but yeah. she's not a technician. Yeah, she's not really a technician. But anyway, um, 
Yeah, so it can. So talking about staining the hair, it could stain the hair. I have seen that. Uh, even the oil that is in the Raw Curls line has, you know, a yellow tint to it because we use olive oil and some different oils that mm -hmm. have a yellow tone to them. And if the hair is white, like I have some clients with a natural white hair, you know, I have seen some tinting that can be picked up in that. Um, but as far as, now, what was the rest of the question? Uh, Something with she, the silicone. Yeah, she said, do, do, you know, oh, are, are, it yeah, it are you a believer that it, that it, you know, that it blocks out moisture? Right. So uh, that's, that's the part where I, I don't agree because there's oils that are really, really, beneficial for the hair and they can be absorbed into the hair just like they're absorbed into the skin when they're pure yeah when they're pure you know and people went through that phase and you know even we're using a lot of vitamin c treatments uh oils and serums on our skin and so it can be very hydrating very nourishing if you have the right combination and the pure oils for the skin or for the hair so that's where i i I don't agree with fully with what she's saying, but you have to be careful that those oils are not then combined with the silicone because then you are blocking and coating the hair. Mm -hmm. So, mm. does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, that, that, that does. Because some people might use, like, the argan oil was a huge thing, Moroccan oil, you know, and they put some of those good oils in there, but then they use a ton of synthetic oils and silicones and things like that. So, you know, that's when you have to be careful. So there can be good ones and there can be bad ones. Mm, sure. Boy, uh, well, we're running out of time, I guess. Oh. Can we do, you want to do one or two other other quick ones? Okay, quick. Uh, we'll do one or two other quick ones. And then ones. you have to answer your... No, I'll do it on the next one. No, you show. have to answer it. <sighs> you have to answer it. So hurry up. What am I thinking? Okay, all right, let's do this one. We'll do the, we'll do two more quick and then I'll find, I'll tell you my dating story. Okay, hurry up. God, all my dating stories okay. are always on the show. Okay, all right. Um, uh, okay, I this is from Carolyn Allen. I wear my wavy curly hair curly 90% of the time. What is the safest way to straighten my hair occasionally slash rarely? Boy, all these, <laughs> yeah, boy, are we really touching some nerves tonight, eh? Yeah, that's fun. So <laughs> I don't mind. I always do. So anyway, um, yeah, because I, you know, I believe I'm not one of those either that says you can never straighten your hair. I don't do it to my hair, but that's your choice. It's your hair. You know, I'm not going to say you can never do something. Not going to curl shame people? No, that's crazy. So um, that's your choice. You just need to know what, you know, the consequences can be. And so she's asking what's the best way to do it. Well, you know, the gentlest way is going to, you're still going to have to use, you know, heat. So we, I would use a blow dryer and the proper products. So to try to protect the hair as best as you can. Mm -hmm. So in the salon, we would normally use a gel with an oil, a, a serum. Oh yeah. yeah. So there we go. All of these controversial answers bundled together. Um, so that can blow out the hair and smooth it really beautifully. There are heat protectants. We have um, in the Raw Curls line a spray gel, which is also a hairspray and a thermal protectant. So there are any other brands that you know of that have that? Tons of them. Yeah, tons yeah. of them have. It'll be called like a thermal protectant or you know mm -hmm. a heat protectant. Um, yeah. So there's th some of them I've seen is in an oil form, and some of them are more of like a spray or a gel form, and that protects the hair from the heat. So you're um, let's, for a lack of better. Uh, analogy of it you're like burning that product instead of your hair when you're applying the heat oh so, okay but that's going to be the best way to just do a good blowout that's going to be the, mm -hmm. okay all right last question is um uh, this came up last week in one of the uh uh, in one of the daily uh, Q and A's. Uh, oh, for those of you who don't know, uh, on on uh, Instagram TV we do a daily question of the day, curly question of the day. We answer one question and that's it. Lasts anywhere from two, three, four minutes or something like that. Comes out at 9 p.m. Eastern time on the at Raw Curls Instagram account. If you want to check that out, you can every day. And um, a question came up when you were out of town, and it was regarding a, a, a woman had asked, she said she was a smoker. Mm. She's got 3A high porosity hair, mm -hmm. and she's finding that 
refreshing sec trying to get second day and third day curls isn't going so great because when she tries to refresh with products or whatever she's got the smoke in her hair still the smell it's not mixing well and her co-workers are giving her crap about it and she's wondering is there any solution to that other than having to rewash every single day mm. smoking and curly hair Okay, well, definitely smoking, you know, is going to have an effect on the hair. Number one, it, smoking, I, whenever I have clients that smoke, their hair is always dehydrated. It's always dry. Um, you can tell. I mean, their whole, I think it, you know, just dries out the whole body. The voice gets raspy. The skin gets dehydrated. The hair is dehydrated. So, Interesting. Yeah. And... But as far as the smell, yeah, I can see where that's going to be a problem. The only thing, other thing that I could think of is using like a curl refresher. They have, Diva has one. Um, it's not the Mr. Right. Gosh, I can't think of the Set name. Set it free? No. no, no. But there's uh, um, there's a lot of them that you can just, you know, spray in the hair to, to refresh. It's going to have a fragrance. It's going to have a fragrance. So. I mm -hmm. wouldn't be a super fan of artificial fragrances, but if you're trying to mask camouflage yeah. or mask, you know, smoke in the hair, you know, yeah. you could do that. Um, maybe even, I'm just thinking off the top of my head because there's things that I do in the salon to try to get rid of um, the smell of perfume when people like have overpowering perfume. You it's got to be something enzyme based maybe that would eat that. Okay, so I was going to say maybe that mix of the apple cider vinegar with distilled water and spritz that into the hair and see if that neutralizes it. Mm, okay. That well, could work. Yeah, that could work. Mm -hmm. So so just try spritzing that all over the hair and see if that neutral. And you might smell yeah. like a salad now, but right. I guess your coworkers would just <laughs> right. be hungry. Yeah, you're, you're right. Well, they'll be happier. So <laughs> anyway, okay. All right. Here, here, here's my, here's my. Uh, Quickly. We'll, we'll wrap this up. Okay, I'll give you the story as, as quick as quick as I can of uh, the uh, Ask Me Anything show of. Um, uh, what was my worst first date? Okay, so so here, let me let me set this up. So I'm in high school, right? When I'm a junior, my best friend Albert, my best friend Albert is dating this chick who's a year older than us, right? And she's really cramping all our fun, <laughs> really cramping it, right? So I convince him to dump her, and he does, right? Okay, don't judge, right? Nice. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. <laughs> okay, so fast forward, I graduate, right? I graduate. I'm a year. I'm like a week out of graduating, right? And um, I'm out at a nightclub, right? And I'm walking out. And as I'm walking out, that girl comes up to me mm. and starts talking to me. And we Oh, so now you're going to date her. She classy, asks me classy. out. She asks me out. That's classy. Well, it's classy. Hey, you dump her so I can date her. <laughs> okay, go on. Don't judge, all right? You wanted to know, all right? It, trust me, I'm going to look really bad when if I don't look bad already. Mm. I'm going to look really bad when this ends, right? Okay, so I said yes, right? So now remember, okay, so I'm just out of high school and I'm broke, broke, and I'm, right? Okay, I got my VW bug and I got a motorcycle, right? So I uh, so I make a date with her, right? And I, uh, I take my motorcycle, right? I'm going to be a cool guy. <laughs> I take my motorcycle, drive up to the house. To pick her up? Yes. It's in the summer. So I drive up to the house, right? I start walking up to the to the front of the house. I get to the just as I get to the front door, dad's at the front door and he opens the door and he said, "No daughter of mine is getting on anything like that." And he points at the motorcycle. Good. And he should and, have had a shotgun. Right. Oh, it gets better. <laughs> so I look at him like I'm like, "Oh, and I see her in there. I'm like, "Okay, let me go home. I'll get get the car right." So I <laughs> I hop on the bike. I go all the way home and I realize I'm like, "I can't go on my VW, right? Because I'm going to look like an idiot, He's right? Say the date, same right? Thing. That's kind of my dating life back then, right? All right. So I have to beg my, I have to beg, you know, figure I'm going to beg my parents, you know, take my mom to get the car. And I realize, you know, my mom's not the nicest person in the world. I'm like, she ain't going to give me the car, right? So what do I do? I go in the garage figuring she's done for the night, right? I go in the garage and I take the car without asking. That's smart. <laughs> Gets better. Right? He's a smart one. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I go all the way back to pick her up and I it's getting late, right? So it's kind of screwing up what my plans There's were. There's a reason we don't have kids. Oh, it gets better. So anyway, so I get to the house, right? Okay, I pick her up and I'm like, okay, we're gonna do something. We're gonna do something else. Well, she lived fairly <laughs> she lived fairly close to the drive in theater on twenty seventh street, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Uh where we grew up. And so I'm like, okay, we, well, let's go to the movies. And as I pick her up, you know, dad says, have her back by midnight, you know, or else, right? I'm like, no problem, right? No problem. Did he give you this? Pretty much. 
pretty much a knob. He was at the time. He never got better. Anyway, so, okay, so I stop. On, on the way there, I stop, pick up a 12-pack of beer, right? Okay, some classy guy. Oh, my God. Was it Budweiser? I'm 18, remember? I'm 18. Or Pabst. No, probably Blatt's. Mm. Um, I know. I, I was classy. I had no money, right? I had no money, right? So we, we, go, to the, we go to the movie, go to the drive-in, right? And during intermission, we decide we're going to go get some popcorn, right? Okay, so I'm running out of money already, right? It was not a good time in my life, right? Anyway, so I'm running out of money. So we get the popcorn, we walk back to the car, and realized we locked the doors with the keys in it. Uh Uh-huh, you got to call your mom. Right, but I can't. Right. So I'm like, what am I going to do? Right. I mean, I'm on a first date. Right. Right. So it's going, it's just right. It's just going bad. So we end up calling the cop, I end up going in and calling, calling the cops. Right. Cause at back in those days, they mm-hmm. used to, up, you know, unlock doors. Right. Mm-hmm. So I got my mom's Camaro and oh, she had a Camaro. She, you had didn't Camaro. Say that. she had a Camaro. Right. And so of course the cop comes and it takes them like an hour to get there. So we're sitting outside. It's hot. Right. And, you know, we're sitting on the hood of the car, which is no big deal. But it was hot that night. It was buggy. Mosquitoes, right? Anyway, the cop comes. Of course, what does he do? Takes the flashlight, you know, shines in there, sees the 12-pack of beer, you know, Mm -hmm. open, right? And he's like, you plan on driving this thing home tonight? He says to me. And I'm like, no, I think she's going to drive, right? I'm like, I'm like, I'm just being, I'm just an idiot, right? He pops us. He lets us in, right? We watch the rest. We we watch almost the whole end of of the second movie and it's like quarter to quarter to 12 and i'm like i have enough time because she lives off 20th street right so i'm going to come down to 27th i'm going to go down ross not far a couple miles right no problem i got 15 minutes right start pulling out right and the movie had not ended yet so i'm like great i'm gonna you know there's tons of people there i'm gonna get out right well i'm driving on the gravel and i can feel the car is kind of bouncing a little bit like this and i speed up and it's going more like this and i'm like oh no I got a flat flat tire and I'm getting flustered because the whole night I'm flustered. Right. And I'm on a first date. I got a white shirt on. Right. So I pull it off on the gravel and it's pitch dark. Right. And all of a sudden the movie lets out. So I go to the trunk and I'm trying to get the tire out and the jack and all this. And everybody's going by honking at me. All my friends are screaming stuff at me, making (laughs) me feel like a complete idiot. Right. So I'm completely flustered. I'm struggling. I can't break the lugs loose, right? And I know it's it's past midnight already, right? Oh, I can't. Break. I go inside. I'm looking for a rag or something, whatever. Next thing you know, I look. She's outside. She's got the lugs broken loose. Oh, nice. <laughs> and she's filthy. <laughs> she's filthy. And I'm filthy, right? Because I have a white shirt on. I'm pulling tight. Right? Okay. Finally get the thing changed. I get, I get her home. And I'm like, I got to walk up to the door. And sure enough, he's waiting, right? And it's like 25 after 12. And to his credit, to his credit, we walk up there. She walks in the house past him. I walk to the door and I stop. And, and he's, he's looking at me and not saying a word. And I said to him, all I could think to say after this like long, uncomfortable pause was, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. And I turned around and immediately started walking away because he could see. He knew something happened, right? Mm. And he didn't say a word. I started walking towards the car. And all of a sudden, I hear her yell. And she said, hey, you going to call me? (laughs) What? (laughs) And I kind of turned. I said, are you kidding? Right? And uh, she said, I forget what she said, but it was something like, like, yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> like, oh my god! <laughs> and that okay. was it. So oh, it right. was bad. It was really bad. Can you imagine that? No. <laughs> like it was the flat tire was just like it. I'm like, oh god. Hmm. He was never nice to me. Mm. Anyway, all right. So, uh, okay, so next week we're doing two shows. We're going to do uh, the Monday and the Wednesday. Wednesday next week, uh, we're going to we're gonna have a guest. We're going to do an interview. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but it is a curl specialist. And we're going to bring her on and we're going to talk about uh, all kinds of neat stuff. We're going to let her take questions and answers. That's going to be on Wednesday. Monday, next week, Monday, we'll do the regular Q&A. And uh, watch us on uh, IGTV and on um, the Rock Curls YouTube channel for the daily Question of the Days with Melanie. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Have a good curl week. <laughs>